Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy and Jake's in the Hi. building! Hell yeah! <laughs> Woo! Dude, thank you so much for doing this, man. We really appreciate it. It's popping, y'all. How are you? How's your, how's your day been? How's your day been? Been all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Excellent. A little hungover, but I'm feeling all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Big, big party last night? Yeah, a little, not even a party, bro. I was just in the studio with my mans, and we just kept drinking and just recording shit, and fucking, yeah, it was a lot, but I feel, I feel good, though. What is your, what is your uh, beverage of choice when, when partying is going down? Oof, uh, tequila, tequila, Corona. <laughs> Hell tequila yeah. Tequila silver, some Casamigos. It's a good yeah. combo. Uh, my co-host oh, today oh. Is, uh, is Michaela, Michaela, it's Tommy. Uh, dude, first to, to to start off, uh, doing a little bit of research before before we did this today, I had no idea that you drummed for tons and tons and tons of bands before going to to Jinx and, and doing vocals. My question is, yeah. At, yeah. At, at what point did you decide it's time for me to now be the front man? And can you can you tell us about that particular day when when that decision was made? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I feel when I was drumming, I was kind of just doing a lot of hired gun stuff, just kind of pulling up, just playing. I wasn't really a part of any of these projects. I, I was a part of some, but those were like more passion projects. Like anything that I was touring with was just like me to get exposure and just try to get myself out there. So I really, I really just, I, I kind of just like went with it for years, but I never really belonged to something and I never really felt like I belonged to something too. And like, you know, I, I really wanted to write and be able to call something my own. So like the last band I was in before Jinx, like when I left, it, it all just kind of came together like really clutch. And like, I finally felt like I was a part of something. So I, I think that was definitely the main reason for sure. Uh, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to call something mine. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be actually a part of something rather than just pull up and just play. But you then know. also the transition to instead of forming your a band that's yours and sticking to the drums, what was the decision to to now be the vocals vocalist and why not do drums while also doing vocals? Like, is can you elaborate more on that? Like be, becoming yeah. full time uh, frontman. Um, yeah, yeah. I I mean I always kind of just played around with vocals, just in my basement, just kind of fucking around, uh, just practicing, just having fun with it, and I kind of just applied rhythm to vocals that that's pretty much how i do like when i go about doing jinx stuff i just really apply a rhythm to vocals and i i've always been a fan of doing it i've always been a fan of like being in the front i was always doing guest vocals for like friends bands and shit like that um just just kind of pulling up and they're like yo you should be a vocalist in a band everyone was kind of telling me that i was like yo you could you got moves you you could scream you could do it give it a shot and uh, yeah, I was just like, you know what? Maybe you're right. Let's try try a little something different, you know. But but I still drum. I still drum all the time. Uh, I still I still write a lot of drums. I still do a lot of stuff in the studio. So like, I, at heart at heart, I'm a drummer, 100. percent Okay, but, cool. Uh, yeah, right. but 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 definitely, I apply I apply the rhythm to the vocals heavily for sure. The uh, the first time, the, actually the only time I've been able to see you guys live was when you played uh, the Glass House in, in Southern California with Attila. And don't oh, shit. don't oh, yeah, tell Attila, one. but I think you guys stole the show that night. Something that stood out to me was you jump into the pit, everyone's pitting around you, and you're just going ham, and that just you don't see that very often. I thought that was really impressive and, and really really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm a I'm an old I'm an old mosh veteran. You know, I came up I came up dancing like since I was little. So you know, I had I had to bring a little piece of that you know with me on tour you know because i'm like yo this crowd i gotta get this crowd more like into it so i'm just like yo i'm just gonna go down there and like, and i'm using a wireless mic i don't even i didn't even care if it was delayed or anything i'm just like nah i'm going the fuck down there and i'm getting them into it fuck that i'm making sure everybody in that crowd is bouncing with me so that that was definitely the vibe that that i go for, for we, sure. re yeah, we received I, I those down, like, vibes that night yeah, for I sure <laughs> michaela what what question do you have for tommy before we uh dive into some of their tunes and do some trivia so when you're playing live, like, what's your favorite song live right now? In in their set? Yeah, in the set. 
Um, I, you know what? I, I'm gonna say it's this. Uh, it's an unreleased song because we were playing it on our last tour. We were on tour with uh, Vale of Maya and Born of Osiris and uh, Victims Hunt the Dinosaur. Shout out to them. All great Hell people. Yeah. Um, there's this uh, new song that we have coming out soon. It's called Cuchi Frito, and it's uh, it's really heavy. It's really fast. Um, it's it's definitely like it's it's a real it's a real crowd pleaser for sure. And they don't even know the words yet. Like, and I feel like that's the thing that I love about our band. We play these unreleased songs, and we get the best reactions from the crowds get out of them. Everybody <laughs> juiced though. And, and they don't even know the song, so. Definitely, That's what's up. I would say that, and uh, maybe fucking up, cause fucking up, like I get everybody bouncing with me for sure. There's a lot of crowd participation in that one, so yeah, either either our unreleased one, Coochie Frito, or fucking up, which is already out. Yeah, either of those two are my favorites. That's what I enjoy about your guys' catalog too. Like each song is different in its own right. Like you guys have the heavier ones, the more hip hop influence, kind of like dancier and bouncy vibes sometimes or you just get straight wild and out heavy like I, I love the diversity of the sound it's awesome thank you thank you, thank you. yeah uh, there's a whole whole lot more of that coming through so if you like if you like the diverse and just blending all that together there's a whole, whole yeah. lot more of that coming like times 10,000 like excellent. It's, it's gonna be excellent. Crazy. excellent that's what's up hell yeah being that there is a lot of hip hop involved in your guys music who who would you say is just like the top three best MCs ever Ooh, top three best MCs, shit. I'm gonna have to go with, I'm gonna have to go with Big L. I'm gonna have to go with Big L. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say Nas too, you know, because fuck that 21 Savage shit. I'm gonna say Nas too. Nas, Nas, my, Nas, Nas, Nas my favorite rapper. Nas, Nas all day. Can't disrespect yep. the legend Nas like that. Bro. Yeah, exactly. Nas, Nas, you cannot touch Nas. Felt. Nas, and then you know what? Shit, I'm gonna say Method Man, because Method Man is like probably my favorite rapper of all time, man. Hell yeah. I respect that. Yeah, and so I would say I would say it's not BMTs, yeah, those cats. But I, I, I love a lot. I love a lot of the new blood that's out here. Like there's a lot of cool shit coming out of New York right now. There's like Stunner Gambino, Busy Banks, Spliff Happy, K Flock. Like I'm really into artists like that too. Who does yeah. who does your guys uh recordings when you go into studio for a new single? Are you do you uh, DIY exactly. everything or uh, our producer Zach Jones. We uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually not too far from my producer right now. I'm in LA right now, but uh, yeah, my, our producer Zach Jones. Uh, we've been with him since I've joined the band. Um, the Jinx had a vocalist before me actually, uh, and they were with uh, Andrew Bayless uh, originally. And then uh, when I joined the band, we started working with Zach Jones. So been with the guy for about you know five years now. Haven't changed guys since. That that's our guy for that's sure. That's chemistry. You know it's good chemistry when it's like that. Hell yeah. Uh, Tommy, I do want to do some trivia. We'll, we'll play. I'm going to play one of my favorites, which is Fade here in a bit, just so people that may not know your music. But uh, th the trivia portion, what movie or TV show have you seen more than anything? Or if I ask you a trivia about this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Oof, shit, man. Um, I'll let you think about it for a second. I'll let you think about it for a second. Maybe, maybe, Pulp, maybe Pulp Fiction? Okay. Maybe Pulp Fiction. That'll work. Or like any of the any of the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies. I know it's kind of corny, <laughs> but like that that's my childhood right there. Let's do Pulp Fiction. <laughs> That'll be a fun one. Badass. All right. Uh, your your oh, yeah. Pulp Fiction. Uh, that was definitely my heartbreak song for sure. Well, we love yeah, it. Yeah, you could tell that one hits in the feels. <laughs> Pulp Pulp Fiction yeah. trivia. I just shoot it in my mouth. <laughs> Just shoot it. I just got a syringe. Shot. Me, doing shots. <laughs> yes. I'm not getting on camera, but we're doing shots. Nice. I'll do a shot with oh, you. Yeah. I'll do a shot with you. You can shot with us. Here Cheers. Go. I like the vibe. Keeping the syringe vibe going for a spooky season. I like Hell it. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Pulp Fiction trivia. Here we go. In the movie, the entire time, there's a briefcase going around. Yes. What was actually in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Marcellus's soul. We'd never actually find out, I don't think. It was a trick question. I know, I know, but the theory, the theory is that it's Marcellus's soul. And I'm convinced that's what it is. I, I believe you. We're going to give it to you. I, I, I would say it's Marcellus's okay. soul. Okay. Uh, you see it glow a couple times when, when uh, Sam Jackson opens it. It, like, glows out. And he's like, oh, sh**. So that means I did not stump you technically. 
So I will take a swig of hot sauce and I have to do a shoey. Are you familiar with what a shoey is? No, what is that? So we had we had some friends uh, from Australia come on the show a while back and apparently it's really, really popular in Australia mid show to take off your shoe, make the audience do the same and pour their beer in it and drink out of it. Now that's kind of gross. I've retired that portion of it. So I just have a sandal. Fortunately, I'm going to do that right now. But uh, if you're Tommy, if, let's say let's say you're hanging out with someone and they have no idea what your band sounds like and you can only play them one song. What's the one song you're putting the headphones on for them and why that one? Heat Wave 98, because it's it's probably the most grimiest. Lyrically, it's the most grimiest, most real, real shit for sure. I think I think I think if I'm gonna show someone Jinx for the first time, like I want to show them like the hardest shit, you know. I don't. I, I wouldn't. I would, maybe second. I would show them the exact opposite, the softest one, Fade. I would go from Heat Wave '98 to Fade. Show them the heaviest, and then show them the little softer side. Yeah, they get the full variety in in both songs, and that's sure. shows Wait, versatility. That was, Hell, that yeah. was the same band. What? Yeah, I love when that happens. <laughs> I love it. Exactly. Heat Wave '98. All right, I got to find a harder question than that. Let's see. All right, I'm going to attempt this one more time. One more time, Pulp Fiction trivia. Is this one's still not that hard, but we might we might be able to get you. There's a famous scene where John Travolta dances, and they do the dancing competition with Mia. What is the name of the restaurant that they're at when they do the dancing competition? Ah. Oh. Shit, the milkshake spot. Fuck. It's $10 milkshake. $5 milkshake. It's $5, $5 milkshake. Oh, five, it's, damn it. Fail. Hey, Francesca. I, I failed that one. I failed that one. Fail. Jack Rabbit Slims. Jack Rabbit Slims is the answer. <laughs> Do you happen to have any hot sauce? I have two hot sauces. I'm not pushing. I got I got dragon's breath. All right, fire it up. Let's go. All right, let's knock it. Dude, when you're uh, when you're when you have the rare day off, two days off, not working about music, not worrying about money for maybe a side hustle or anything, I don't know. What is your just favorite pastime? Oh man, my favorite pastime. Literally, just the simple things, the simple things, man, just just kind of like just chilling, listening to music, just like just being kind of like, I, I guess you could say isolated, but I, 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 I just I just really like just sitting down and just finding new shit. Like, I'm really into finding new artists and finding new music. I just love music. I live and breathe that shit every day. So even if it's like, yeah, if I'm not doing music, I'm still like doing music somehow you know what i mean uh, just, you said just you said last things. night you were in your homie's studio do you do like production on the side uh i don't i don't do production i like i'm really bad at it but i do write i help a lot of artists and stuff like that i i, I write for people and, and shit so i do a lot of stuff like that like lyrics and stuff very cool michaela what's another question or two you might have um what what bands are you jamming on the side right now like mainly yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see what I've been bumping. I've been bumping a lot. I've been bumping a lot of Stunna Gambino. Not the, not a, not a band artist, but yeah, Stunna Gambino is fire. I've been fucking with a lot of uh, Killing Joke for so. I've I've been bumping a lot of Killing Joke. It's a, it's a little old school, but yeah, I've been I've been really getting into Killing Joke. Uh, I've been bumping uh, Shout Out Harper. I've been bumping his shit. Hell yeah. uh, the, new, the new Alter Bridge record is actually pretty kick ass. I do like the new Alter Bridge record. Um, I the shout out to the Spider Gang homies. I be bumping like Bro Man God and like Corpse and Black. All their new shit has been fire. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, like FDS too. Yeah. yeah Forty seven. What's up? Forty seven. FDS. Hell yeah. Uh, out of all I the places it. that you've that, that you've toured in in all the projects you've been involved in, what is the worst show ever that you played? Everything went wrong at this show. Oh my god, bro. I have one for you actually. It was um it was the last date, the last date on the Attila tour. 
Um, I, it was in Orlando. I, what the fuck was this venue called? Hold on, I'll tell you in like one second. On the Attila tour, we played this venue, and it's it, it was the worst smelling, most disgusting. Is Orlando? I used to live I, in Orlando. Maybe the Haven, the Haven Lounge. Um, it was uh, shit. Where is it? Where is it? Um, yes, I, yeah, it was. It was. It was the Haven Lounge. Yeah, because oh, I, that place I, is I, a shit hole. They shut it down like a couple months, like after we played there, because they were saying um. Oh, like due to inexcusable conditions or some shit like that. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't the Haven. It wasn't the Haven. It was a sound bar. Sound bar. That place fucking sucked. Oh my god, it was the worst. It smelled like shit everywhere. Like everywhere you walk, it smelled no. like shit. The floors were mad sticky. We walked in there. I like didn't even chill inside the venue at all. Like I went inside to play, and that was it. I was like, it's the last day of tour, and I want to hang out with everybody. But I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm chilling outside. That that was that was the worst venue I've ever ever been inside. Ever. But nothing went wrong, like like set wise, set wise while you're playing. I mean, like, dude, it like the set was just like I I just wanted to get off the stage because it just smelled so bad. <laughs> I got so you. I was just like I was just yo, please, is it time to go. Like I'm like yo, Loki, I want to cut a song. It smells so fucking bad. I know bands are like yeah, yo, punk rock, gritty. Like we like it dirty. I'm like yo, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I'm not about that at all. Like this this venue stinks. I'm for sure. <laughs> do you have Do you have any did Did you and and Franz possibly do any like pranks or anything when you guys on the road? Do you have any like funny tour stories that you can share? Oh, shit. I mean, yo, we. They, one thing I'll say about Attila is that they were like some really fucking chill ass dudes. Like they were super generous. They like we just kind of partied a lot with them. Like after like the shows, we had off days. We'd always like end up at some club or bar. And, like, I feel like we'd always just do, like, stupid-ass shit. Like, just just typical stupid band dude shit, just making a ruckus. Like, not, nothing nothing too disrespectful, but, you know, just, just doing that, just doing your typical, like, you know, rock star shit, just getting, like, drunk and rowdy and having a good time. That's but, cool. uh, yeah, actually, one one good prank, one good prank that happened once, I was, uh, this, this is what a different band I was playing drums for, but it was the last day of tour, I was drumming. And like during the last song, they just slowly started taking drums off the stage. It's like they started out taking a cymbal, then they take another cymbal, then they take a floor tom. So like by the end of the song, it's literally just me and my snare drum. So that I think, is funny. I think that that was definitely a prank that that I will never forget for sure. I was like, oh fuck, dude, this sounds like shit now. I'm literally just playing on a snare, no kick drum either. Like everything was gone by the end of the song. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Yeah, really Hell yeah. Uh, Michaela, we got time for final questions. What's your final question for Tommy? Um, I usually ask every guest this. Um, favorite all-time band or artist, if you have if you have to pick one. I had to pick one. Fuck, man. Like, like the one that got you into like doing what you do now. Um. It's gonna be typical. It's gonna sound typical, like, but you know the typical, you know, Corn, Slipknot, you know, the Gateway bands, you know, mm -hmm. bands that kind of like opened it up for you, you know, for when it comes to bands. Like before that, my dad raised me on all like the classic rock type stuff, like Metallica. But then when you're old enough to discover your own music, you find the Slipknot, you find the Corn. Then it gets heavier. You find Suicide Silence and shit like that. Um, I guess I would say Slipknot because I was just like, that's just childhood band right there, you know. Uh, yeah. As for hip hop, as for hip hop, Method Man for sure. That's like Hell that's yeah. like that's who made me like fall in love with hip hop was Method Man. Hell yeah, Tommy. Yeah. My final question, same thing, kind of like Michaela said. I asked just about everybody that we have on the show this final question. What is what is a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has has uh, given you at one point in your life that was like a a game changer for you, or the worst mi mistake you ever made? in your musical career that you don't want a, a starting up garage band to make? Oof, man, that's a difficult one. Um, man, I like, I, I, I remember someone, I remember someone kind of told me, that this might've been back in 2013, someone told me that you could play for whoever you want. Like you could play for, you, for whoever you want. Like nothing is stopping you. You can you can do literally whatever you want. I, as cliche as it sounds, like saying, "Oh, if you put your mind into it, you get what you want." Like, but but it really is it really is the truth. It, as long as you're consistent and you just don't really take breaks with shit, 
Like there's always going to be some sort of results that's going to happen. And it's, it doesn't have to be the biggest thing ever. I'm not saying you're going to like sell out Madison Square Garden, but as long as you're consistent and like you take what you do seriously, you will always get some sort of reward for it. Absolutely. Oh, I like that. Do you happen to have one more syringe of tequila? We'll do one more shot on the way out. On it. Let's do it. She's on it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Immediately, I love it. The shot? Wow. Okay. Hell yeah. Well, dude, it. you did not have to do this, but I really, really appreciate it, man. We're, we we absolutely love Jinx. We, we want to support it any way possible. Um, so you. Thank you. You, I you're... love you guys, man. I love everything I'll do. It's really cool. Big fan. Thank you. Very, very kind of you to say all that. All my homies, all my homies were like telling me, yo, dude, you got to go on local band, smoke out. Like, it's just like you know. That's awesome. Smoke no weed. We, smoke weed. we didn't even smoke no weed either. Let's do it. Let's do it. If I, let's, 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 right, let's, 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 how about this? We do a shot and we hit the bomb. Let's do it. We call that a cannonball. Let's Ladies knock it out. Can I please have your attention? Cheers. Cannonball. Let's knock it out. Here you go. Here. Mm. Yep. What's your preference, indica, sativa, or, or a little mix of both? Sativa. Sativa. I'm kind of like a depends like, like what I'm doing. I don't like. I don't like feeling like I'm gonna take a nap. I like weed that makes me feel like I'm on cocaine. Yeah, up up. <laughs> Keep you up up. I like yes. that. Well, Tommy, you have yourself a fantastic day. I appreciate you, sir. Uh, please, you're, please don't be a stranger. You're welcome back anytime. If you're watching out there, chat, please, please, please. Hit the follow button. Support Jinx. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy and Jinx! Give me a hell yeah. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Ow! Ow! <laughs>